Welcome back folks! Today it's about Vito Rizzuto, Canada's most feared and ruthless mafia boss ever. Vito Rizzuto Jr. was one of Canada's most notorious mafia bosses. He also was known as the Montreal Teflon Don because he seemed untouchable to the police and his enemies. Unlike other criminal groups in his city, Vito convinced others to make peace, so making everyone more powerful and even more wealthier. However, his past mistakes caught up with him. He suddenly lost all his power. If you want to know the whole story, just stick around, then I'll say drop your video requests in the comment box down below and leave a like to support my channel. Now let's dive into Vito's story. Becoming one of Canada's most powerful mafia bosses wasn't easy. Niccolo Rizzuto was a simple man in Italy. He was born on February the 18th in 1924 in Sicily. His father, Vito Rizzuto Sr., moved to America shortly after Niccolo's birth. Therefore, Niccolo grew up without a father in Sicily. Niccolo's father, Vito Rizzuto Sr., was then murdered on August 12, 1933 in New York. His mother married a new man about about a year later, it's speculated that Vito Rizzuto Sr. was killed by members of a rival mafia faction from New York. Niccolo Rizzuto's use was, however, normal. In 1945, Niccolo found the love of his life, Libera Tina Mano. She was Antonio Mano's daughter. Antonio would later become a boss of the Sicilian Cosa Nostra. Just a year into their marriage, a young couple had a boy named Vito. Shortly after, a daughter followed. In 1954, Niccolo decided to immigrate to Canada to establish the Cosa Nostra there. Niccolo Rizzuto thus founded and led the Rizzuto organization in Canada before his son Vito Rizzuto Jr. took over. He, his wife, and his children then settled in Montreal. Vito was eight years old at that time. Niccolo set to work to build and expand his own mafia family. Thus the Rizzuto family was born. However, he still had connections to Sicily, specifically with the mafia there. The Rizzuto family had a close connection to the Bonanno family from New York. The leader of the Bonanno family, Natale Ebola, died of cancer in the 1970s, leaving a huge power vacuum within the Bonanno family. The Bonanno family then was led by Philip Rastelli in 1973. After the death of Philip Rastelli, Joseph Massino took over the leadership of the Bonanno family. Niccolo Rizzuto continued to focus on being the boss of his family in Montreal and maintaining his relationship with the Bonanno family and the Mafia in Sicily. However, Niccolo had a conflict with Paolo Violi, a boss of the Calabrian and Drangheta. Niccolo fled to Venezuela to avoid an assassination attempt by Paolo Violi. The dispute between the two bosses escalated. In the end, Niccolo Rizzuto had his opponent Paolo Violi killed in an ice cream parlor. His body was left there as a clear message about who was in charge in Montreal, namely the Cosa Nostra. Niccolo Rizzuto knew he needed to strengthen his ranks even more because the Ndrangheta wasn't easily intimidated. So he tried to find new allies and new businesses in Colombia. From that moment, on Niccolo had complete control over the entire mafia in Canada. Niccolo was the absolute peak of his power. However, what he didn't know was that a deep fall would soon follow. The Rizzuto family had control of the businesses in Montreal in 1991. When you're in such a position, you always need powerful allies. Don't you? They still had connections to the Bonanno family from New York. The leader of the Bonanno family in 1991 was Joseph Massino. Joseph Massino felt that some of his men would oppose him to overthrow him. He also talked to Niccolo Rizzuto about this problem. Niccolo promised to solve these problems to prove his loyalty to the Bonanno family. It ended with two mafia hitmen being sent to solve the problem. They managed to kill three people who turned out to be traders. After that, they all focused only on making money. However, seven years later, Nicola Rizzuto was arrested for drug smuggling. He had to go to prison for five years. He then handed over the reins to his son Vito Rizzuto Jr. From then on, Vito led the mafia organization in Montreal. For strategic reasons, Vito decided to put all disputes on hold and collaborate with other gangs in Montreal. His motto was always that there was enough money for everyone. This was the first time that biker clubs and the Italian Mafia united 
That's why the streets became much safer in Montreal. There's a small example to show you how powerful Vito Rizzotto Jr. was. Everyone knows that the Hells Angels and the Rock Machine Nomads had a long-standing feud, but Vito wanted the two clubs to bury the hatchet. And so they did. The Hells Angels and Nomads had to do a few things for the Cosa Nostra, so they worked together and were richly rewarded. Canada became a major player in the international drug trade. Everyone focused only on business. They made hundreds of millions of dollars, but all that money had to be laundered. They did everything from shell companies to gambling. The Mafia also wanted to invest in the Strait of Messina Bridge project. This ambitious project aimed to build a bridge across the Strait of Messina between Calabria and Sicily. This would have allowed the Mafia to launder several billions of dollars. Silvio Berlusconi was one of the construction project representatives. The police caught on to Vito Rizzuto and the Mafia. The police were sure that Vito was a big figure in the Cosa Nostra, but they didn't know that he was the most powerful of them all at that time. He had created something that no one had done before. All gangs danced to his tune and everyone earned a fortune out of it. The drug trade worked like this, for example. The drugs were brought to Canada from Colombia through Vito Rizzuto's connection. The Hells Angels and Nomads had acted as wholesalers. And street gangs sold the drugs to regular citizens. While his people became rich, Vito enjoyed his life. You could see him playing golf with politicians or driving around in very expensive cars on the streets. Vito lived his life as if it were from movies. He got the nickname Tev London after walking away unscathed for the second time after an accusation. What could have stopped him at that time? He seemed as if he had made no mistakes, but New York caught up with him again. At that time, he was there to eliminate the traitors. The police investigated in every direction, but they found nothing. Then the unbelievable happened. Joseph Massino, the leader of the Bonanno family, was caught and snitched Vito Rizzuto to the police. This made Vito a prime suspect in this case again and he could have gone to prison for 20 years. However, he managed to dodge the sentence well and he only had to go to prison for five and a half years. While he was in prison, his father again took over the reins of the organization. But from this point on, it was clear that it would all fall apart. The police were now investigating every family sharply. They managed to send 70 members to prison. Then came the sudden end of Vito's father. He was one of the 70 men who were arrested and went back to prison for two years. Don Nicolo Rizzuto didn't have much time left. He was then shot by a sniper in his own home and died at the age of 86. More and more members of the family were killed. Vito Rizzuto got out of prison and tried to regroup and seek revenge, but he was far from where he once was. However, he wanted to regain the crown. At his release, more and more people who opposed him disappeared. He made sure one last time that the streets in Montreal were covered in blood. What no one knew was that he was battling cancer. He then passed away at the age of 67 in 2013. Since then, the Rizzuto family has been under unknown leadership. Well, did you enjoy my story about Vito Rizzuto, the most dangerous and powerful mafia boss in Canada? Then show me how loyal you are. Like my video, leave a nice comment, click on the bell. Thank you very much and until the next exciting mafia story. Ciao ciao. Ci vediamo.